Hello and welcome to the Friday Night Interviews with Cast Iron. I'm Andrew Allen and every week I'm speaking to a person living in or working in or just passing through Brighton about the creative work they do. And this week our guest is Laura Muggeridge. Hello, how are you? Hi, all right, thank you. I like your jumper. Thank you. It's um, it's a it's a jump. I, I I had a profound thing to say about that, and I, I, it's a jumper. And what could be more profound than that? <laughs> yes, <is>. Yeah. Well <laughs> but how are you doing? Uh, to, uh, all right. Yeah, today I'm all right. I think that's just such a big question at the moment. I think your it? answer was quite the appropriate. I think that's the appropriate answer. Is uh, yeah. I mean, yeah. we've known each other. We, we know each other in real life. And it occurred to me just Although before... I haven't seen you in real life. Well, this is the thing I was going to say. Uh, we know each other in real life, and it just occurred to me before we start this interview, I've not seen you in real life. We've not shared the same air in at least 14 weeks, 15 weeks, possibly more. Oh, my gosh. Is that how long it's been? Yeah, it, it, it would have to be at least, wouldn't it? Oh, my goodness. Oh, so I didn't want to start on such a dark note. <laughs> well, I think that's where conversation is going very quickly at the moment. So. Are there things, because I, I had opportunity to be outside a couple of days back, um, getting going into an old-fashioned fish and chip shop, oh. a bag of chips, and genuinely felt quite emotional about the whole affair. It was just yeah, like, a bit overwhelming. And so there are, we're now at the level, well, I think I was at the level on week one, but we're at the level where mundane things are overwhelming or we find great totally. beauty in um, what 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 are the really normal things that you're really appreciating um yeah a few weeks ago there was i, I went for a walk along the seafront and there was um I, I don't know if it was allowed to be there but there was like a little van selling takeaway coffee and i was like oh. <laughs> yeah like i didn't even really want a coffee but i was like oh i've only made my own coffee for the last hour 13 weeks yeah. and it just felt really it felt really thrilling um yeah it was and it was yeah. it, it wasn't even that nice no it doesn't <laughs> have to be the amount of people i've seen sharing photographs of paper cup coffee as if it's the holy grail has been quite sort of remarkable <laughs> yeah no, I've. I think the one of the things I am doing the most in in lockdown is drinking coffee. I'm, I'm, we're really going through it. I mean, really, I mean, it's fine. You know, it's 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 fine, isn't it? It's fine. It's fine. It, it's going to be fine. Did you see the video uh, shared by? Uh, I still have no idea if it was genuine or really elegant trolling. Trolling, trolling, both. Where uh, it was a, not trolling. That's fish. Yeah. But, Charlie, yeah, and fine. she was um, showing a video of um, the way to make a British cup of tea. Oh or God, I was pot so upset. Tea. I was so upset. I had to turn it off. I think it was the point where they put it in the microwave. I felt that's I felt, that's in felt, the first five seconds. I felt um, genuinely uh, angry. <laughs> And you know, one of those days and you go, I'm fine, I'm fine. And then you watch something and go, I'm not fine, I'm not fine at all. <laughs> like, don't, I was, yeah, ho absolutely horrified. And they were so like, and that's how you make tea. I was like, no, it's not. No. It's not are... how you make tea. And I don't even like tea that much, but I know that you don't like it, make it like that. No, there were a number Great. of things that I found troubling with that. It was, if I'm remembering correctly, it was how you make British tea or hot tea. Oh, is, is, it, is that a thing? Is it like tea that's just... We're the Epid. only people who drink hot tea. Yeah, who we are. I mean, they don't. They're not drinking hot tea either because they were heating water up for five seconds. Well, yes, and then water tea filling it with, a, with what appeared to be a pint of milk. Horrendous. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say that's one of the most upsetting things I've seen in lockdown, but it's really not. <laughs> no, we've had a good few months of literally the killer hornets, many, many things. It's it's a year that's come to test us. So yeah. on that note, and this is actually could be a difficult que a difficult question to answer. What are you looking forward to? Did you, do you have like goals or sort of things over the horizon that you're going? Oh, actually, no, that I'm looking forward to. Um, I think those things have become quite little now. Yeah. Um, and they're also things that I'm looking forward to and yet bring me a certain level of anxiety as well. Like my local bookshop, um, City Books in Hove, yeah. which I just love, they're going to be open again for uh, social distance browsing. I really miss browsing. I miss not having to buy some things because I've touched it and I've gone, oh, oh, I don't need that. 
I have to buy it now anyway. <laughs> I have to buy I have to buy that lime anyway because yeah. I've touched it. So like I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to um my boyfriend being in my house yeah. again. <laughs> that I shouldn't have been the second thing I said. <laughs> I think you know, if he's a boyfriend worth keeping, he would have appreciated the the, the leveling up of books and boyfriend. Housing. I miss my relationship. Yes. <laughs> um yeah, so he's coming around for Sunday lunch for the first time. He hasn't been in my house. I haven't been in his house. No. Um, we've been having socially distanced walks like twice a week. Um, so he's coming around for lunch. Isn't that beautiful? I know. I'm even gonna. I'm gonna do cauliflower cheese. Like I'm doing. I'm doing the whole, the whole thing. I'm yeah. really going for it. Yeah. I'm really going for it. On the subject of browsing, I was in a shop mid uh, lockdown, I guess, and I passed somebody who was. Um, in the biscuit cake section and there yeah. was a packet of like mini rolls type things going on and they clearly missed chocolate because of the, even in a packet the scent is yeah. quite strong what they did laura is they picked up the, I'm anxious. they picked up <laughs> you're anxious now yeah. they picked up the packet and i can understand this they they Breathed in deep. They breathed in the scent. Ah, oh, of course they put it back. Oh my god, what a monster! I, 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 you know, it's a matter of some genuine regret that I, I didn't go full nimby and find somebody official to wow. go. That is that's brave. Yeah, it's just very confident, isn't it? The confidence. I find like I've only been to the supermarket twice in um since lockdown. Yeah. Um, because I love, well, I really love food. I really love cooking, and I love going around the supermarket. I, I, it's something that I get. I get some time to myself. I put my headphones in, and I really enjoy the experience of looking around food shops. And I've been to a big supermarket, yeah, twice. And I went the other day, and it feels like I'm on supermarket sweep, but in an apocalypse situation. So it's like for me, it feels like the combination of supermarket sweep and maybe paintballing that's or not like a bad idea though or something like i used to hate going to those late like i just felt really like i was always the one like hiding in a tunnel being yeah. like i just want this let it be over let it be over i hate this this is the worst birthday party ever and that's how going to a big supermarket feels like to me at the moment it's like i go in i'll get something and i'll put it in the trolley and i'll go i don't really that's not the one i wanted but go 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 like I, I won't go back again i can't i don't don't want to go back round again no. i just go well i've got this so i have to eat it now like i just oh and then i come out and i'm like oh, and i've got my mask i've got my mask on and i can't breathe properly <laughs> i'm like so i was so anxious when i got out of the um the supermarket the other day, I had to come home and I just, I sat on the, I went in the bathroom, locked the door and just sat there for 10 minutes. Yeah. I was like, this is awful. I've got some, I got some weird food as well. Oh, so. what, 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 define weird food? What, what's weird food? Well, just things that I would never normally put together that I have to work out how to put together. Um, I knew that I was maybe not okay the other day because I made um, my dinner and I know that I'm feeling emotionally vulnerable when I have, um, scampi and chips like oven oven scampi yeah, yeah. oven chips for tea there was no green there were no peas there was nothing it was incredible and I loved every second of it but for me that's a that's a little red flag <laughs> I see the, the only bit of colour in the meal is the red flag yeah yeah and, I, and it's great and it has its place and it's delicious and I loved it but I also know today is a, must be a vulnerable day. Yeah. If I'm eating oven chips, that's just for me. Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, I, I'm not saying that anyone who enjoys oven chips is having an emotional breakdown. No, I don't want that to be the tagline of this. No, that that would be an uh, awful sort be of very like, general, very sweeping. Yes, oven chips are great. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I've got my sort of mug of coffee here. Always that coffee. Cheers. It is coffee. Um, lovely. Do you have sort of um, projects that you were sort of uh, working on that have had to be paused or because this is the thing I, I've been speaking with creatives uh, uh, with this about the balance between because all creatives I think have, at some point in their, their lives have said it's not so much the money the money will be nice but what I need is more time I need more time and now 
with a celestial sense of humour, we've all been given more time. But it's not necessarily more time. And then with that comes a bit of guilt of if you're not being creative all the time. A, a bit of guilt, like huge. Yeah, yeah. Bit, like huge amounts of guilt. Um, yeah, I had a few projects postponed or cancelled. Um, I'd been commissioned by Harrogate Theatre to do um, a bespoke uh, walking piece for them. And I'd been up to Harrogate and done the research and met the people I was going to make the show about. And obviously that was um, that was cancelled. And I'm not entirely sure when it will happen because yeah. obviously everything's quite up in the air. Yeah. Um, but I feel like I've got that show in me. And the longer it goes towards when I actually perform it, it feels like it's getting duller again, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that was a shame. And I was supposed to be in Reading Museum in April and I was gearing up towards doing a work in progress of a new show at the Brighton Festival. And and I, you know, there's no there there was obviously um practically speaking, apart from the final performance, there was no stopping me still making that, still writing yeah. it. Yeah. Um a lot of it was gonna be be my, my by myself anyway. But it's not I'm struggling to stay to stay creative in the same way because I think um a lot of my work is about tiny details yeah. and I'm not seeing all those tiny details all the time and I think I often do a lot of the writing of my shows in my head when I'm doing other things yeah yeah so I find it very hard to like sit down blank piece of paper write be creative now because I go, I don't want, I don't want to, I don't like it now. But it'll happen when I'm on a bus or doing yeah. something else. I think creativity, in my opinion, you know, my opinion is not anybody else's opinion. It's it's messy, isn't it? it it's it's um it's chaotic. Um, and if you're, you know, none of us are the thousand monkeys in a locked room with a typewriter. We're not. Can you imagine being in lockdown with a thousand monkeys and typewriters? What a nightmare! <sighs> Absolute nightmare. I mean, they'd eat the typewriter. There'd be bodily fluids everywhere. I mean, it's I. I'm sharing lockdown with a seven-year-old, and it's not worlds apart. No. but you know, I don't have any. There's no typewriters. You no, know. but also no time. There's no time for you. <laughs> Where's the time for me? Oh, I mean, the, the no. I can't, I can't. <laughs> not even on a, on a theoretical level. Nope. Could we think um, of that? Well, I'm sh I'm sharing him, so I have him fifty percent of the time. So actually, the, the you know there is there is time when I don't have him. It's been the first sort of day and a half recovering and tidying. <laughs> well, tidying it's futile. It's futile. Um, and and actually, the only time I've really sort of had to myself over lockdown has been um, running. I've turned into right. I mean I've turned into some sort of. I'm not going to say I'm a runner, but I, I run. But you do run. And is that, because you say that's like time to yourself, and I guess that's just uh, emotional, mental time to yourself, because it's a it's a thing that only serves its own purpose. It is. Um, and no one can ask me to do anything when I'm running. No. Like, uh, I don't have to be anything to anyone else. Like, I run past someone you know and I was going to say and I'm gone in a flash I don't run that quickly I run like an old man hurrying for a bus but I and I use that time to listen to podcasts as well like you know and like lots of people listen to music when they yeah. run because it's motivational I'll listen to like Alan Cummings podcast yes. or, or cookery podcasts or um so I feel like I'm filling myself up with stuff that's just for me while I'm running and I I it's turned out that I've really needed that actually and I've had a goal to aim towards so I feel like I've I've ticked like one thing the rest of the time feels like kind of so like basic just getting through the days yeah. <laughs> um but that's been like I've had a goal to aim for. And it's weird actually, I've hit it now. So I did couch to 5K. Yes. And I did and I did it the other day. And I was like, yeah. And now I'm like, what do I do now? Um and I tried to go running after it and just sort of stopped. Cause I was like, 
well, what's the point now? <laughs> well, that's interesting, isn't it? Well, I bought some. I bought some wine and went yeah. home. Well, exactly. That, that's the, what's been the box has been ticked. Yeah, because if you're not a runner, if that's not the you know, sort of the motivational purpose. And but the fuck to catch five k is a box ticked. That's quite nice. And I think what's well, is, yeah. what's quite nice yeah. about that is just finding the next thing that's quite you know n not necessarily world changing on a world platform but for you it's like oh I did that yeah I, and I am going to continue to run and, and I think I f when I get back from that that's when I feel creative and, and that's when I, I have ideas while I'm running as well because it's outside in the fresh air and I'm I'm giving my brain a bit of space yeah. where I haven't got someone going mommy mommy look 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 mommy look 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 mommy mommy look at me mommy look look so uh, no, I I just run. I I can't run away from him in the no, flat. No, small. no. Do you feel that if you've got a, like a single particular part of your project or a thing to work out, that the podcast sometimes get in the way of the thinking? You have to go. I was going to silent running, but that's more like a submarine that's underwater. But um, I um I almost never give myself silence actually, and I wonder if that's a bad thing. Um, sometimes I often fill my fill my ears with things, yeah. um, and actually I find that I find that helpful. Yes. Um, and it's not even necessarily about what they're saying. It's just that my a bit of my brain that's getting distracted is concentrating. Well, maybe the other bit's being creative. Yeah. I'm not sure, but it it feels like I couldn't run silently. I no. find that really difficult, I think. Yeah, I mean, I don't run, but, but I do walk everywhere well, as a commuter. You must have been late for something once and had to run, no? Well, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, all right, yeah, right, yeah, thank you, Laura, yeah, technically I have run <laughs> at some occasion, yeah. It's like, you ever missed a bus? <laughs> well, no, I, no, because the bus, yeah, oh, yes, I, I have on occasion run, I, 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 or I've or I ambled, or I've jogged. Yes. Sometimes okay. I've moseyed, but um, yeah. But I guess there's a difference. Th th there is there is there's a sliding scale. On purpose. Yes, <laughs> but often I find that you know if I'm walking somewhere, walking, commuting, um, that that can get quite a, like a, a, a dull thing to do. And so obviously podcasts and stuff make that journey because you're it's entertainment. Do, do yeah. you find running itself boring? And that's facilitated by the podcast, or is it just difficult because it's a it can be quite demanding on you? Um, I don't find it boring, um, and I think a lot of that is because um, I would determine boring as the absence of feeling, uh, whereas when I'm running, my legs are going. Um, so they're very busy. Yeah. And my lungs are going, ah, you know, so uh, my, my body's very busy. So it's not, I think I, I like to change my route sometimes. But also once you're like, we're, um, we're ve I'm very lucky and in a very privileged position to live so close to the beach. And, yeah. and I think that's genuinely one thing that's got me through lockdown because I don't have a garden. I don't have any outside space at all. And so being able to run and look at the sea, which changes all the time, has been, I'm so, I feel very, very grateful to that. And don't take the sea for granted at all, no. because it's been a really important part of lockdown for me. I think so. I think so. Like you, I, I feel privileged that we live so close to the sea. It's so useful to be able to see a horizon. So it's not mm. being constantly hemmed in by yeah. concrete and buildings. Yeah. Um, you, you, you're quite a, a reader. You read a lot. Oh, um, yes. Um, and, so, a and a reader, Andrew. Yes. So, I mean, do you... Oh, actually, uh, here's a segue then. Do you ever listen to talking books and do you ever listen to talking books while running? Um, I don't listen to talking books while I run. I've tried it um, and I found that I'm not paying enough attention, actually. Yeah. I Because my brain is wandering slightly, I would get to the end of... A, uh, a walk or a run and go I don't actually know what happened there and so then I'll feel that the good thing about podcasts is you can kind of come in and out yeah. sometimes and then that if you miss a bit the next podcast you're not going to be like oh I didn't yeah. hear what happened yeah. um 
and I don't listen to a lot of audio books. Um, I like I like either podcasts or I like to sit down and be still and quiet and read. Yeah, and yeah. The stillness <laughs> and the quietness is really important. What have yeah. you been reading recently? Uh, I've been reading quite a lot actually. At, the, at first, I didn't have the um, I just didn't have the motivation to read. I didn't have really. I just didn't didn't give myself the space to sit down and be quiet and I struggle with that anyway I really really struggle to relax um I am currently reading um a book called The Bass Rock by Evie Wilde it's about three generations of women um in Scotland and I'm really I'm really into it and I uh I've been reading a lot of very um the books that I've been enjoying the most have been very, very en- engrossing stories when I kind of go in. So I've been trying to read some nonfiction as well, but I find I'm not getting in as much. And actually the things that have really hooked me in lockdown are the things that you feel like there's another world another world in your book. Yeah. And you sort of go, oh, I'll come back to you later. Um, I read Tony Morrison's Beloved, which was... I mean, just extraordinary. I've wanted to read it for a while, and I got it in um, uh, a book subscription. Actually, I bought it um, from the uh, feminist bookshop um, in Hove, and then I was sent it as part of a book subscription I've got, so I went and swapped it (laughs) um, back again, and that was extraordinary. Like, I've never never read anything that I... that I had to give myself so much space from after I finished it, like I couldn't really do anything else immediately afterwards. It um, was quite something. Um, And I also read some Sarah Waters, who I've not read before, read The Night Watch, which I really liked. Um, But I don't decide what book I'm going to read until I finished the one. I don't have books lined up. No. And you finish and then I decide... What's next? And you read one book at a time. One book at a time. Yeah. Yeah. No, I've never been somebody who has lots of books on the go. Like you like that, don't you? You have lots of books. I tend to, yeah. So I'm trying this year to not do that as much. So I at the moment I'm reading one book at a time. Um, mm. What are you reading at the moment? Right now I've started the turn of the screw. Um okay. and James, because I'm because of a thing, I'm having to sort of not having to, but I'm choosing to read lots of um gothic literature or sub um connected with that so i'd read um haunting of hill house uh earlier in the year which was gorgeous and rebecca uh last month so there's oh, lots yeah, of yeah. those sort of things going on so yeah that's been quite sort of it that, feels like the wrong time of year to be reading gothic stuff like that yeah that's a good point actually yeah it should be sort of um all... yeah it should be it should have rain bashing against the window a, a cup of hot chocolate and um yeah. <laughs> Although to be fair, it's quite dark today. It so. is. Yeah, I, I like the fact that we both involuntarily just look to the, our respective windows to check. Yes. No, no, it is dark. Yes. We are yes, not. We I are not lying. Confirm the weather is grey. <laughs> well, Laura, I feel like this feels like almost the introduction to the larger chat um, that we've only just got started. But our time is upon us, like a crow on a writing desk. <laughs> Staying with the gothic. So poetic. Yeah. Um, and so, um, I, I will, obviously, I look forward to seeing you in real life at some point, uh, possibly this year. One day. One day. It will happen. Yeah. It will happen. But thank you so much, Laura, and um, take care, and we'll see you again soon. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.